What's up, Whittier? Welcome to What's Up, Whittier, a homegrown podcast. A podcast to showcase Whittier's businesses, personalities, and hidden treasures. Hey neighbors, producer Christine here with this week's community cork board announcements. Thank you so much for tuning in to What's Up Whittier. I'm going to go through the announcements. I kind of do this every week, but if you're new to the show, thank you so much for downloading. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for pressing play. It really means a lot. If you heard about What's Up Whittier from um, me, producer Christine, being at city council, again, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And I just want to let you know that I'm concerned for the same reasons that you're concerned, for the same reasons we're all concerned. We don't like seeing people living on Greenbelt, right? We don't like seeing people living at Parnell Park. So, you know, we went ahead for What's Up Whittier and we interviewed different organizations. So you can actually listen to um, a couple of our podcast episodes. You can listen to episode 77 called Come Visit Us with Irene Murrow and TK Monzon. Both are from Whittier First Day, which is our local homeless shelter. And you can also listen to episode 79, Supporting Other Women, with Liz Apodaca and Mary Venegas, who are from Sir Optimist International of Whittier, and how they help the local efforts with women in preventative efforts in homelessness. You can listen to episode 80, Never My Plan, with Carol Reza and Anna Romero. Carol is the founder of Bridge of Faith and also is the owner of Upscale Collectibles. Upscale Collectibles is the fundraising arm for Bridge of Faith, which is a wonderful nonprofit that also helps young women, um, you know, that are at risk or, you know, it helps young women empower themselves to get themselves into a better situation and, you know, also offer stability. So it's a great episode. Um, let me see what other ones do we have here. You can listen to episode 90, A Place to Call Home with Constanza Pachon, who is from the whole child. You can learn about what they're doing, um, you know, in order to aid children and their families deal with mental health and all these other issues. And, um, you know, there's this episode. We have another cool episode um, coming up. So please tune in, listen, and make sure that you spread the word about What's Up Whittier. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now on to our regularly assigned schedule with the community cork board announcements. Every Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., visit the Uptown Whittier Farmer's Market located on the corner of Philadelphia and Bright. This is put on by the Whittier Uptown Association, again every Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you have an interest in becoming a vendor, email farmersmarket at whittieruptown.org. On Saturday, April 13th, join the City of Whittier and your community for the 2019 Whittier Extravaganza Egg Hunt. This is going to take place from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Parnell Park, 15390 Lambert Road. It is $5 per wristband, so if you buy four or more wristbands, you get one for free. It will start at 11 o'clock. The first egg hunt is at 11.30, and that's for little babies that are two and under. At 12 o'clock, we have three and four-year-olds who can go on the hunt. At 12.30, five and six-year-olds, one o'clock, seven and eight-year-olds, and at 1.30, nine and ten-year-olds. Again, for more information, we're going to put the Facebook link below. Just show up to Parnell Park on Saturday, April 13th, maybe a little bit before 11 o'clock so we can get started and have fun with these Easter egg hunts. On Saturday, April 27th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., join the United Nations Association of Whittier for Whittier Earth Day Celebration, a free event appreciating Mother Earth. So again, it's going to be taking place from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on April 27th at the Grassy Area Lot, 6718 Greenleaf Avenue. This is a free community event featuring speakers, yoga, kids crafts, and more. And after you do that event, head on over to the Whittier Historical Society and Museum for their annual Fashion to a Tea fundraiser, Runway of Curiosity. Again, this is their annual fashion show fundraiser. This year's theme is Alice in Wonderland. 
and we will start promptly at 11.30, so don't be late. 11.15, you know, I would suggest getting there at 11.15. 11.30 will be a really nice etiquette class. So again, this is at the Whittier Museum, 6755 Newland Avenue, which is on the corner of Philadelphia and Newland. For more information and to reserve your tickets today, make sure you give Nick a call at the museum, 562-945-3871. So the office hours and museums open every single day. Um, even if you want to go on a tour, go on a self-guided tour. It's always fun. Um, I always learn something new when I go on a self-guided tour because I think I just give myself more time in, um, you know, the house area or maybe it's reading about Harriet Beecher Strong. Do you guys know who that is? She's like this woman who made a patent. Um an irrigation patent so she can water all of her walnut trees how cool is that well um yeah she's an independent woman you know that's how Whittier started I think that's really really cool and I learned that at the museum so you can go do that and if you need a docent someone to guide you they're open Fridays and Saturdays from 1 to 4 again the museum uh is totally free admission is totally free but if you want to go to this fashion to a tea fundraiser it's $40 for members of the historical society and $45 if you are not a member of the Historical Society. So I'm sure Nick will be waiting for your call and get on that. Sunday, April 28th, join the Whittier Uptown Association for their Taps and Tapas event. This year we will feature over 35 brewery and restaurant tastings. The Whittier Uptown Association presents Taps and Tapas, the ultimate day of craft beer and food tasting that will feature several craft breweries while showcasing Uptown's growing and vibrant restaurant scene. The VIP is sold out and general admission is available for $60 at the following restaurants. 6740 Auntie's Bamboo Sushi, Bizarra Capital, Brickhouse Pizza, California Grill, Colonia Publica, Crooked Gap Kitchen, Deli Up, Fresh Off the Hook, Greenleaf Thai, JC's Kitchen, The Knotted Apron, Modern Shaman, Nixon Steakhouse, Flight, Red Oak Barbecue, Sage, Spin Lounge, Tacos and Michis, The Alumni, The Commoner, The Rusty Monk, Turnbull's Tavern, Chicken Coop, and Veggie Cat. What a mouthful. That's I'm so happy there are so many great restaurants here in Uptown Whittier. Here's some of the breweries that are going to be participating as well. We have Santa Monica Brew Works, Lagunitas Brewing, Angry Horse Brewing, Deschutes Brewery, Three Weavers, Slow Brewery, Chihuahua Cerveza, Pacific Plate Brewing, Brewheria Company, Unibrow, Bootlegger Strand, Ballast Point, Track 7 Brewing, Anderson Valley Brewing, and North Coast Brewing Co. This is going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you visit any of those restaurants and buy your tickets today. So this shout out goes to Captain Aviv Barr who posted in the Next Door app. Join the Whittier Police Department for their annual open house. This is going to be a health fair and a KDK fun run co-sponsored by the City of Whittier Police Department and PIH Health. On Saturday, May 18th, uh, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, the KDK begins at 10 a.m. and it's free for the community. There will be tours of the police station, a health screening, helicopter landing, LA County Fire Department will be there, there will be food available for purchase, healthy lifestyle information, and fun run pre-registration available. For more information, call Parnell Park at 562-567-9450 for their Parks and Recreation Department or Whittier PD at 562-567-9200. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week, and I hope you subscribe, and thank you for downloading. Thank you for hitting the subscribe button and pressing play. My name is Christine, and you can follow me at the City Moon on Instagram. You can go to my website, christinesingerluna.com. Lucky for you, I am a certified California public notary, so you can go to my website and look up more information there on how to contact me. If you need a realtor, you can hit up at Remo the Realtor. If you are, if you really want some great customer service and just need some really wonderful people, trust Team Remo the Realtor. Go to RemoTheRealtor.com and check out Remo the Realtor on Facebook and all social media. If you are looking for an architect that you can trust, a project manager, 
Well, head on over to j2architects.com to learn a little bit more about the J2 Architects firm and speak to Jesse at J2 Architects by going to their website and their social media at J2 Architects. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast episode. We hope you enjoy it. If you know people from Whittier, um, maybe people who have heard about Whittier, let them know about the podcast. It's something really cool that we have to offer, and I think that it gives people a great insight into our community and how much we all kind of care for each other. This is you friendly town, and um, you know, I think it shows when we all come together for a great cause. This is a really great episode. Like I said, I hope you enjoy this series that we have going on in regards to the homelessness in our community. Take it away, Jesse Remo. What's up, Whittier? Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> man, it sounds like you took your energy pills, yeah, man. Jesse, I like that <laughs> long stare in my eyes. <laughs> That's a little awkward. <laughs> I just want to see if you're still alive, my yeah, friend. No, I'm still. I got. We got a beautiful view today. That's right, man. We're. You know, this is one of the buildings that that I think doesn't get enough. Um, I guess mention or or, or showcase recognition. or recognition. recognition. There you yeah. go. Because uh, you're right, man. Once you get above like the third floor or fourth floor, you're you're seeing. You have a 360 view of Whittier. Yeah. What I can see my house. I think from here. What building are we in, actually, for those at home? I don't know. What is the name of the building? It's called Whittier Whittier Square. Square. Yeah, Whittier Square, But it's the infamous green building that is right across the street from City Hall. That's right. It's it's one of the tall standing buildings. And with that said, uh, who do we have today, Remo? We have the one and only City Council, uh, Fernando Dutra. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, an absolute pleasure to be here. And, um, you know, and it's a joy to see how far... Um, you know, uh, what's up Whittier has come, you know, I can, I can remember when, you know, when uh, Christine, uh, when you guys got this thing started and, and uh, you know, I thought the name was really cool, right? It's a catchy name and, and uh, the, what's best about it is, is that you guys provide a service to our city that um, I know that the residents appreciate and certainly as a, um, you know, as a council member and as a resident, I'm a resident, I really appreciate the service that you guys are providing and it gets the information out. And what's cool about it is is that my 20-year-old son thinks that I'm cool for being on our <laughs> podcast. And so that's, you know, one of the best parts is yeah. that I, I am an – this is the first broad podcast I was ever on and, and uh, um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate being part of it. Just right. let him know that you're going on, on twice now. And uh, we <laughs> might be a regular it, now. No, I was going <laughs> to say, we want to make you a regular and yeah. come in once a month or something. If that you is. want to be a guest host, just let me know. There you yeah. go. Really? You have guest hosts? Yeah. Occasionally here and then. Uh, oh, my when, gosh. Yeah, when uh, Jesse's out of town. When we everyone decides yeah. not to show up to work. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> he's a no show sometimes? Oh, uh, well, come well, on. We're all busy. Just <laughs> scheduling. <laughs> scheduling is Actually, we just voted to keep Remo on. On for the rest of the year. Yeah, it was, so. it was, it was yeah, tough. I missed, extension? I missed two sessions, or I had or like five. I had stuff come up. <laughs> Who's keeping track? Yeah. <laughs> this day, that day. That's but, right. but we were talking about the podcast. We're yeah. close to twenty thousand unique downloads. Holy yes. cow! Yeah. That and is a lot of so them are really cool. local. So, um, so for all those people that are listening, we thank you for your support. Hit the subscribe button and uh, <laughs> yeah, download the podcast. Thank you so much for subscribing, downloading, pressing play, and supporting our podcast. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Yep. So, so for this one, this episode, obviously, this is a very unique uh, episode. Um, obviously, we reached out uh, trying to talk on, on a specific topic. It's a very important topic that's going on around the city right now. And it's uh, obviously we'll term it as homeless, uh, the homeless uh, concern. Um, we'll kind of go through the range, and, and, and really at this point, we want to just get your, your take on, on obviously what you guys have done as, as a city um, and then any future plans that you guys might have, uh, the kind of workings behind the, behind the scenes, and uh, just kind of get an update, update of where, where we're at and then uh, what is it that the community could do um, or expect or, or somehow chime in to, to be able to uh, help with this, uh, like we all keep saying, a concern, right? In a, in a very big situation, and yeah. and with that said, I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself to to everybody sure. who has not, who does not know you. <laughs> There's plenty. That's right. <laughs> There's plenty. That's nice. You know, but but thank you, Jesse, and I appreciate it. And 
Um, uh, my name is Fernando Dutra, and um, you know I've been a resident of Whittier for over 30 years. And um, you know, uh, in 2000, I was fortunate to uh, get involved with the city and. Um, you know, I worked with the city on the design review board for six years, and then I worked as a planning commissioner for eight years, and and fortunate for the last seven years or so, I've been uh, uh, an elected, uh, um, you know, uh, city councilman. I uh, spent one of the years uh, as, as mayor, which was an absolute honor because this is a very cool city we live in. We have cool people, and we have a cool city, and it's well run, not because we're running it, because a lot of our, it's been run for a long time. I mean, it's considered you know, one of the nicest cities to live in, you know, in the yeah. region, as you guys know. And not because, you know, I'm part of um, the city, because it just is. It, before I got here, it was nice, you know, mm -hmm. and it's still nice, and we're going to keep it that way, despite the fact that we have a uh, an issue, you know, with homelessness. And, um, and look, I'm a resident, and, you know, and, and if I don't do something well, my neighbors know to come over to my house and talk to me in my garage about it. And I jog by your house almost every so day, Fernando. So, you know, you know I'm easy, to, I'm easy to, to, to get a hold of. And, um, you know, my neighbors, you know, are my neighbor. By the way, on my street, people have keys to my house and I have keys to their homes. That's why I stayed in that street for 30 years because, you know, when, when, our, when we're gone, they can come over and watch my dog. And we, when they're gone, we go over and watch their dogs. And it's the kind of neighborhood that we live in. So... Obviously, I'm a big supporter of this city because of, you know, of the community that we have. Nice. And it takes every single one of us to, to create the community. But here we are today, uh, homelessness. And it's a sad, sad state that we're here today. It really is. And look, uh, you got to remember, I'm, I'm just a simple carpenter, so I'm going to get right down to the facts. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, to me, it's about uh, uh, enforcement. It's about assisting. And it's about persisting, Right. Those three things. I'm going to keep it really simple. Um, enforcement, to me, that is we have certain laws uh, that we need to be enforcing and that we need to be fundamentally enforcing those laws and allowing our officers to enforce those laws. Uh, let's, let's take care of enforcement first. And then uh, assisting those individuals that need help, that we identify, uh, that need help and how we need to help them. And by the way, homelessness is different levels of homelessness. Correct. You know, there's so many different lo levels of homelessness. There are those drug dealers out there that want to live on the streets and that want to do drugs, and they, they don't want the um, restrictions, if you will, um, of having uh, to abide by laws of a house or of a, of, a, um, uh, of a facility that can give them help, right? And, uh, and trust me, I know too much about that because I have family members of mine that I love that unfortunately have fallen into that hole and that, that has impacted my family um, more than I want to talk about right now, but yeah. that's a different conversation. So having said that, um, you know, it's important that, that we look at enforcement, you know. If you don't belong there, you shouldn't be there. Um, and, if you, and then if, you, if we offer you help and you want the help, we should give you a place to go and get the help. Um, and then we need to be persistent about it as okay. policymakers. Why we need to not just dip our toes in it. We need to have a plan and follow the plan. Right. right. I mean, I'm a I'm a simple builder. For me, in my company, you manage the budget, you manage the schedule. So yeah. I'm, that's how I see it. We should do the same thing. We should enforce, assist, and persist. Stay in the game. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that means uh, have teams that follow up and follow through. And that's what we're doing in the city of Whittier. So as an example, um, um, the, let's take the two biggest problems, right, Parnell Park. Yeah. Um, so we have met with the uh, county sheriff, Department of Homelessness, the outreach team, very cool team. Uh, Captain uh, Jeff Diedrich um, has an incredible team of 12 guys um, that have been taught – to how to deal with homelessness. And so what they, in essence, do is they go into an area, they investigate first, right? They interview, find a homeless person. Let's find out why they're there. Yeah. So they have a very um, strategic manner of how to identify why that person is there. They interview them. They categorize what kind of help they need. Um, and then they follow up and say, look, you know, if you don't, if you, if you don't want help, and, you know, and if you're not going to abide by laws that we all have to abide by, then we're going to have to escort you out, right? And they do that in a manner that is, um, that is predictable and I think that is uh, justifiable, right? Yeah. After you've gone through all the steps, 
which we have to, as you guys know. Uh, and it, it's not fair that individuals sh- should take up an entire area. For example, let's take Parnell Park, Great Park. In three weeks, we're going to have extravaganza. I don't know how many of you have ever attended. Right. And that's over 3,000 little kids. They go there, and they're picking up eggs. They're, they got their hands in the, in the sand. They have their hands in the grass. Yeah. Shouldn't those 3,000 families be offered an opportunity to attend extravaganza that they've, like they've done for years? Is it fair that 20 or so individuals that refuse to leave after they've been given all of the uh, options – don't want to leave. I don't know that it's fair. You so, know, and on a personal note, I can say that my niece um, has had actually birthday parties at Parnell Park for the last. You know, she's only going. She's going to be six years old in May, and then this is the first year that we're not having it there. But you know, and then that's something like a financial undertaking that my sister has to take on, right? Because she has to go somewhere else, not a public park. She has to rent a facility. Um, so we can't. I mean, we can't even use our neighborhood facilities, which is kind of right. crazy. Which is, and so. Christine, that's a perfect example, right? So after we've done our job, after we've gone out and we've said, gosh, you know, we really want to help you. You know, where can we, where can we guide you to? And they say, no, screw you. You know, we're not going to uh, – I don't want to leave. You can't make me leave. Is that fair for the rest of the residents? Yeah. To me, it's not. So that's enforcement. Yeah. Right? That's when enforcement comes in. Enforce, assist, and persist. I came up with those three words today at work. I was thinking, what's really simple for me? Mm-hmm. Enforcement to my head. Assisting is, is, is just as important as enforcement, and then you have to persist. It means you have to stay in the game, follow up, and follow through, just like we all do with you know, everything else. So at Parnell Park, we've, we've contact, contacted the county sheriff's department of homelessness, and they're in the middle of doing those interviews and working through that process. Our expectation is that in the next two or three weeks, maybe sooner, uh, we'll have control back of, of, of Parnell Park. And most importantly, the individuals that, that are there that want help will f- have had help from us, right? Um, uh, because remember, Whittier is a, 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 a compassionate city, yeah. right? We just, we're just wired that way. We're not wired to just kick people in the butt and kick them out. That's not who we are. So we're a compassionate city. Uh, but we need to follow the steps and do it right, right? So that's what we're doing there. Related to Whittier Boulevard, as you know, Whittier Boulevard is a, uh, a Caltrans uh, access, and so Caltrans uh, access has some very specific rules, things you can do and can't do. What we've done is we've, um, um, we have requested the assistance of our state legislators. So we've talked to Caltrans. We've said, Caltrans, we've got a problem. We want you to be part of the team to clean it up so that we can perform the same uh, task, if you will, that we're doing at Parnell. Right? Yeah. We want to do the same thing. If it's successful there, we want to take it over there. But we need Caltrans's approval. I don't know how many of you have ever done work with Caltrans. Um, you know, there are great people there, but they have systems and processes in place that take a little bit longer than anywhere else, right? Yeah. It's a pain, right? Yeah. I mean, look, as a builder, I deal with Caltrans, and I can tell you that it's, it's onerous. It's a tough, tough process. They have their reasons for it, but unfortunately, we're dealing with it as a result of it. It's not our street. It belongs to Caltrans. So we've said to them, this is an emergency. Those people that are there, potentially a car can, can go over that curb. You know, I mean, look, because you're traveling at 45 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour on, on Whittier Boulevard there, it's very easy for a car to go up over the curb. God forbid that should happen, and something should happen. Yeah. So we've said that it's an emergency. It's a safety issue. We need your assistance. We've also um, um, uh, 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 enlisted the, 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 the assistance of uh, Barb Archuleta, Senator Barb Archuleta, as well as uh, Assemblyman uh, Ian Calderon. We've asked them to get involved because we want this to be a collaborative effort between all of them uh, so that when we go into Caltrans property, we're going to do it legally and we're going to do it properly. Yeah. Look, you know, um, I'm not one for knee-jerk reactions to stuff. You know, I'm probably a little more methodical, right? But then that keeps us out of trouble, and it still gets the job done. Um, and so that's what we're doing on Whittier Boulevard is – Today, as a matter of fact, right across the street, uh, they're meeting with Bob Archuleta, Senator, Senator Bob Archuleta, and Ian Calderon's representatives, as well as sheriffs, and we're coming up with a plan about how we're going to deal with that issue on Whittier Boulevard. Good. And then we're going to manage that plan. Um, I would assume, once again, that it was going to take – it's going to look, hopefully, very much like the plan for Parnell. Nice. You know, um, and uh, that's what we're going to do there. Uh, and, as you guys know, uh, for the meeting on Tuesday night, which – Christine is 
so dedicated. She's, I look out into the audience, it's 1130 at night, and there's Christine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, my phone dies and I go home. Just kidding. <laughs> is that what no, it takes? No, no. <laughs> the game she's playing is no longer available, and so she's like, okay. No, 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 thank you. Aren't Appreciate you just that. excited by everything that we say? I'm, pissed the I'm just kidding. No, no, really. Uh, really, actually, I, it is exciting to me because people ask me, you know, because of the podcast, you know, people will be like, oh, do you know what's going on here? What's going on there? And that's kind of why I started going because I didn't know what was going on with a certain issue. But, uh, you know, now I've become more involved in different um, clubs and groups and so if there is not a city representative there you know I kind of just pop in I say well at city council this was said this was said this was said and then you know then that's confirmed either through staff you know um, at city or something like that but it's about keeping for me from my perspective it's about keeping people informed when they ask that's why I go and this is a perfect medium to uh, for that to happen in right it's mm -hmm. easy it's simple and, and it's effective and it's real time Yeah. right I mean and, and so uh, I know that there's no fake news coming out of what's up Whittier. Yeah. It, there's yeah, factual absolutely. news coming out of here. And <laughs> no, so I no appreciate that. No fake news. <laughs> it's all good news. And, and um, you know, so for that, I, um, I support it. And, and um, so, so, yeah, so, so, we, so, we, uh, so what we did at the city council meeting is we established a, um, uh, a, a homeless subcommittee. That's important because now, we, you know, instead of having five council members, you know, going out in different directions, you know, running around mm -hmm. taking pictures next to tents and stuff like that. I mean, taking pictures, that, that's not productive work to me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm all about less talk and more work, right? Come up with a plan. Now we have a, a subcommittee. We're going to funnel our ideas. And by the way, that subcommittee has been tasked with the following. A... Um, uh, resolving the, the, the homeless issue here to the best of our abilities, doing it legally, right, and listening to the residents. It's very, very important. And so the people on the, uh, th that we've um, uh, appointed that committee are Councilwoman um, uh, Kathy Warner. Kathy has a tremendous organizational skills, uh, been part of this community for God knows how long. My God, she has seven kids and 32 grandchildren. Do you think she knows about <laughs> dealing with people, right? Um, I wish we had one grandchild. I'm jealous. <laughs> I'd take one, you know. Um, but uh, And then uh, Councilman uh, Henry Bouchot. And Henry is uh, a, a real um, – we're lucky to have Henry on, on the city council. He is a veteran. Uh, but above and beyond that, he's also a resident, and he cares about this city to the point where he's focused. He is laser-focused on – um, uh, like Kathy, they're both laser focused on how we're going to do this. And now we're going to have a team that we can kind of funnel information to, right? You guys all know out there that we have a subcommittee. We have a city council homeless subcommittee in the city of Whittier. I, am, I, 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 I implore you to please get involved, but sending them information. Let's be productive, yeah. right? If you have ideas, if you know something's taking place in Seattle or mm -hmm. across the nation, that somebody comes up with a great idea. Give it to us because we all get there together, right? And these are two people that listen, right? They listen to the residents and they want the residents to be part of the solution. So please, uh, you know, get involved with that. And, and uh, you can contact Christine at uh, What's Up Whittier to see how you can get involved with the subcommittee, okay? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Uh, there you so go. once again, <laughs> hey, yeah, that's there right. are 88,000 residents in the city of Whittier, Imagine if we could pull all of that brain power together to resolve the issue. We could be leaders in, in this county of how to resolve the issue, yeah. right? And so uh, I, uh, I'd like to see everybody contributing to that as well. And so we've, we've done that, um, and then uh, that's what the city is doing. And then just, you know, to, to plug what I'm doing, and not that I want to, you know, not that I'm doing anything special, but, um, you know, uh, I've been appointed by the uh, Gateway Council of Governments, which is the... Um, it's 27 cities in our region. Uh, I was appointed by unanimously by all of my peers uh, to be president of the Gateway Council of Governments this year. And uh, wh what I've uh, instructed our team to do is to create a, uh, a tactical attack task force, a housing task force, because you know you guys know I'm a builder, right? And uh, remember what I said: it's not just about building; it's also about mental health issues, yeah. and it's about all of these things. But as it relates to housing, this is what I do for a living. And by the way, I've never built a project in the city of Whittier, nor will I ever, because, you know, I don't believe in doing anything in the city in which I'm a representative of. That's just me. 
I, don't, I never want to have to recuse myself on that issue. I, I'm just here to do my job. And so uh, as president of the Gateway Cities um, Council of Governments, uh, what we're doing is uh, we're looking for regional um, uh, uh, ways of fixing the issue. I think regionally we can be much more effective because uh, we can pull all of our resources mm -hmm. to locate um, locations for either um, extra beds, right, or buildings that can be purchased, that can be converted to beds, like, for example, the city of Bell. By the way, on Friday um, I had a tour uh, that I created for cities, and we had cities from all over Southern California come out, and we went and looked at the uh, Bell, City of Bell's uh, homeless shelter program that they have, which they've done an incredible job with, by the way. And we also went to the City of Long Beach's, Long Beach's uh, project called Long Beach and 21st. And it is a supportive housing project. I believe it's over 50 units. What they do is they take homeless people that want help, they bring them in, they show them how to be housed. Yeah. They show them how to pay the rent. They show them how to go out and find a job. Right? These things that we hope all of our homeless are able to do, take care of themselves. So they're a model program, and we went and toured it. And what we hope to do on a regional level is to mirror those programs at the Gateway Council of Governments, at the COG, and uh, provide regional housing so that we can do this uh, in an effective manner. That way, no one city is impacted, right? We come together as a collective body of cities, and we determine where's the best place for temporary housing, supportive housing, you know, all the different types of, of housing models. And um, so I'm, I'm very, um, very honored that they um, elected me, uh, appointed me to be part of that, um, of that, that board and, and the things that we're doing there. Um, uh, for now, yes, if I absolutely. could chime in on that. Yep. Uh, so in terms of like, you know, we talk about homeless and I know homeless, at least from my perspective, and, and, and I don't want to say obviously personal experience, but just being around uh, uh, areas where where they have where we do encounter people who are who have no, have no home, they're sleeping on, sleeping on the streets or in a tent or in a car. Um, we're we're dealing, with, I think, with two separate situ se separate type of of uh, people or or populations, right? Yep. You have the homeless who are uh, who are families, uh, mothers, kids, um, you know, young adults. Uh, teenagers um, who really are are in a tough situation. Um, they're they either lost their job, recently lost their home, um, or or just trying to avoid uh, some bad situation they're in with their family, right? And so you get runaways. Those are are the population that I think you guys have been doing as a city uh, support for which is the ones we don't see on the streets. It's the ones who are in these facilities that have, uh, you know, either a shelter or, or temporary housing or, or some kind of program, right? Then you got the other population, which is the ones we see more often, which is the ones that we're, we don't like to see, right, uh, which are the ones that have some kind of mental uh, disorder mm -hmm. or, or uh, some kind of uh, addiction, right, whether it's alcohol or drugs or, or, or any other addiction that does no good to them, right? Those are the ones that unfortunately are the ones that not don't want that support, right? They don't they don't want that treatment. They don't want to be able to change their situation, whether they don't realize it because they're on drugs, or or just they have mental issues that they again they don't know they're in a bad situation. Um, so talking about those those two separate populations, I think that when we talk about providing a shelter or some kind of temporary housing, you're going to attract both. And, again, uh, you're going to get the ones that want to take it. They move on. They go through programs. Success. Then you get the ones that don't go through a program, but they still kind of linger around. So what do you – what's – I guess what is the response to, to, to that if we do bring a shelter here where you bring you're, – you're attracting those two populations, but then the ones that were – I don't know if unhappy is the right term, but, but the ones that we don't want to see – uh, lingering around, stick around. Like, I mean, yeah. are you attracting, are you attracting um, that population? And if so, how do you deal with that? that that's it's, th that's a great um, uh, question because it very well may be where we are right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, it mm -hmm. very well may be that those couple of hundred people or so that that are, that are roaming around homeless in our city are, are that group, right? So I'm going to answer your question. Um, 
first of all, um, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because in the city of Whittier we have two excellent, uh, and you guys know, uh, we have two excellent, uh, um, we have several, I should say, several excellent nonprofit organizations that deal with, with homelessness and people in crisis, you know, and, uh, but off the top of my head, immediately, the whole child. Mm-hmm. Costanza down on um, on Colima, uh, she does she deals with family uh, homelessness and mm-hmm. um, they do an excellent job and I think she services over three thousand families or oh, yeah, you know and, and like Costanza that. is doing a great and before that was Charlene uh, was the uh, director and so we have the whole child that that does that there and then of course we have First Aid right mm-hmm. our model um, um, you know homeless uh, uh, shelter uh, agency and. And um, Irene Murrell is there, and she's a longtime friend of mine, and her son and my son grew up together, and, and Irene's doing an incredible job. Of course, you know, Ted Knoll, who just passed away, mm-hmm. and we're going to his funeral, uh, or his service, I should say, on Saturday here. Um, and uh, Ted did an incredible job in, in, you know, in establishing First Day. And First Day is, of course, for single um, you know, men and women uh, that want assistance, and we have lots of friends of ours that have gone through there and, and have been successful. So we have those two, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. And, of course, uh, to, to, to get to your question, those individuals that fall off of those two patterns um, are the ones that, um, that, that are very, very hard to deal with, and they make this even more complicated. They make it complicated because, you know, they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to do anything. They have the rights. They have certain rights to... to, to uh, that we offer them as society, right? Um, and so what are we going to do about that, uh, about that individual? Well, I think it comes back to persistence because there isn't one single – I can't say to you, we're going to pick that person up and we're going to drop them off at Santa Fe Springs. That's not right, and we'd never do that. We yeah. wouldn't even consider that. So short of physically picking somebody up, which we'll never you know, do unless there's the need to do so for their own safety or for the safety of someone else – a lot of times, by the way, those individuals that have that level of mental health issue, they fall into a safety condition that they you, that they have to be, unfortunately, uh, put away to, for their own protection and yep. protection. Of some, uh, some, and those those are the very hardliners. So that's the only thing that we can do is if they become a safety problem to themselves or to someone else, then of course we have to incarcerate them. Uh, I mean and. Uh, but that's the very last thing that you want to do. Uh, other than that, there are no programs available, you know, that, that I know of that um, for that individual that doesn't want to go, right, that says no. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a complicated situation, you know. So you hope that you funnel everything down, you know, you take care of the ones that want help. You take, you know, you, put, you th- throw the ones in jail that, that should be. By the way. Mm-hmm. If you're a drug dealer in this city and you're t- going over to those encampments and you're giving heroin to them and you're supporting them, we're going to throw you in jail. We're going to find ways of throwing I- – I'll tell you what, I'm making that commitment. Our police, you know, um, is focused on – if you're a bad person and you're over there, you know, uh, selling drugs, if you're over there selling drugs on, on our property, uh, you shouldn't be there. We're going to put you away yeah. because you're a bad person, right? Yeah. We don't want that. Do you want that? No. Right? Do you want that? Christine, do you want that? Absolutely not. Right. So we, got, we have to do our jobs yeah. and enforce the law. Because back to what I said before, enforce, assist, and persist. Yeah. Right? Those three things. So if you're a bad dude or person or woman, mm-hmm. you know, you're selling drugs, we're gonna, you know, we need to put you away. And yeah. to be as simple as that. Uh, but it goes back. I don't know that I answer you, 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 if I had a complete answer for your question because it's complicated in that I don't know what that person is. If that person is mentally ill, we're going to put them. We're going to help them find a place to keep themselves safe or keep everybody else safe. Yeah. If they're a, you know, um, uh, if they're a bad person, we're going to you know put them away. And if they, if they need physical help, we'll take them to the hospital, yeah. right? And then, but then they're released back out to the streets. Yeah. Well, and here, here's my take. I mean, yeah. it's you know we talk about trying to. By the way, I'm, I'm open for suggestions. Yeah, yeah. No, if not- you guys have suggestions today. I'm here for suggestions. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to post it on our Instagram my, my, post. My suggestion, I mean, I come from a third world country, which <laughs> there's a lot less laws, so that would allow you to enforce so much more. And, I think um, it's a little so, inhumane. So, no, I'm not. It's inhumane. Well, it's what someone does to themselves. I mean, if they're in a position where they can't kind of protect themselves or be in a position where they can serve themselves, 
is that inhumane? You know, and yeah. See, and and mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's it, philosophical. Yeah. It, it is, that's and, but, but, <laughs> deep. but that's, that's deep. A, we'll be here till tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. But that's what you almost have to look at it. I, mean, I know there's laws to protect everybody, and, and that's great. I mean, that's the reason why we all live here in this country, right? But but there's got to be a limit to where you say, you know what, this is inhumane for everybody. I mean, this is a, yeah. not just danger for him or, or her. But it's a danger for the, a bigger population. Um, but but even with that, what I was going to say in terms of like, I mean, did I steal your mojo there? Or? Well, I'll, I'll share one like analogy. You know, we don't have children yet, but when we do and my child asks for more chocolate, more chocolate, more chocolate, if I continue to give them, then that's, you know, in a way that it's, it's shame on me in a sense. But the child doesn't know. They just want chocolate. So it's my responsibility to say no. No more chocolate or no more video, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. I think in a, in a situation like this, if someone can't care for themselves, you know, I know government reach and all that stuff, but that's, that's my. And, and that's the thing. I think we're we're giving a lot, and yeah. but I, my point of view is that we're giving in the wrong in the wrong way, or for the wrong reason. Um, like I said, I think we've been giving enough to to those families or those individuals who really need it. And I think we're, it's the job is being d- done well, um, but we're really not focusing on this situation, which is which is the people who really need the help and don't want the help. And and at that point, if they're not trying to get the help, then how do we avoid people from people getting there? In other words, we should start looking at the at the root of the of the whole situation, which most of it, or I say most of it, I say part of it would be this whole addiction, right? So uh, drug addiction, alcoholism, how do you start dealing with some of that stuff? I know we just had uh, Officer uh, Scoggins uh, on the last episode, and, and he talked about, you know, some prevent- preventive measures. Uh, but even at that, like, there's their, their hands are tied legally. If we were to reverse some of that stuff, I think some of these individuals will be in facilities where they're beginning to get forced to do or take on those treatments before they get into general population. Mm-hmm. Um, so at that point, you're almost dealing it, dealing with the situation in, in a twofold. One is is preventive. The other one is actual rehabilitation. Right. I know. I know. We all talk about money and how much money is needed to do all this stuff, and we're all kind of tight. You know, we don't want to keep spending. But do you spend on that, or do you spend on the other side, which is now you're dealing with the actual situation, which, yep. which might cost you double right just those, those are all great points and, and to that point um a couple things that that, that, that came to mind um ab 109 yeah. 47 and 57 were um all uh, legislation that came down that um in um you know and they had i think good intentions Correct. you know but bad consequences that's right mm-hmm. like i said good intentions bad consequences the consequences were that as you know we had one of our officers kill as a result of an AB 109er, right? Yep. Um, and so there are people being released back to society, um, you know, as a result of the laws that have come down from, you know, from the lawmakers uh, that shouldn't be coming down because, I hate to say this, but in prison there are programs uh, for mental health, you know, and there are programs that help people um, get better. But if they only go there for a week, you know, ten days, and they're able, to, they're, they're released because uh, of the laws. Yep. They're not real. They're not getting the help that they sh- that they, that I hate to say it, they should be getting right. Yep. And, and philosophically, by the way, in the fifties and the forties, you had all these mental institutions, right? You know, and and you know, in eighty, you know, Ronald Reagan got rid of a lot of these mental institutions, and yeah. you know, I mean, I don't know that I'm smart enough to figure out whether or not we should have. Uh, more of those institutions for people that should be somewhere where doctors take care of them. I don't know that I'm, I can answer that question. Um, but, you know, look, you know, in the 50s and the 40s, we probably didn't have a lot of these issues because people that needed help had a place to go get help, and it was consistent, predictable, and what have you. Um, and I don't know what the, that answer is there. But to, to your point, um, to treating addiction, and I'll tell you, one of the, after spending some time uh, with each one of uh, with whole child and, and the first and first day, one thing I've learned is if when people have an for as an example, this isn't for everybody. When people have an opportunity to work, right, they have a focus. Even if they have, you know, some mental health issues, right. Yep. If they can get mental health uh, help and they have work 
a place where they have they can go to every day and be responsible and be you know I mean it's the old saying if you have someone to love and something to do and someplace to go you know it kind of makes your life pretty good yeah. right if you have all those three and so um, I think that you're right as a society we need to look at at create as working on addiction and 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 a lot of the problems that they have with families after spending time with the whole child is it's very fundamental you guys you can imagine this the husband loses the job right the family is now having financial issues husbands you know take pride in who they are maybe there's domestic violence that comes as a result of that right yeah. uh, because of pride and ego um, and then who's there to help Who's there to prevent the homelessness? Let's talk about that, preventing homelessness and preventing those issues from happening, right? So if we could, and that's just one sector of it, yeah. right? Um, and so we, we need to spend money doing that, finding out how to, how to prevent homelessness. Maybe it's coming up with voucher programs for families that are coming in, they're falling into that. You know, you find out, you know, God forbid you lose your job. Maybe you're a carpenter, a plumber, electrician, wherever you are. You can't make the rent. It's much better that you, you you know you can go somewhere to get a voucher mm-hmm. to help help you get over the next you know thirty or sixty days, right? So that you don't. So that, uh, look, I got to tell you a quick story. Um, every year I've been lucky to be um, to be a judge at the Boys and Girls Club um, uh, Student of the Year Award, right? You know what the common thread is amongst all of those kids that that are the not all of them. Most of those kids that deal with really hard times in their lives, I, I, look, I've been a judge for six years. I can tell you, the common thread is the family was broken up. Oh. Uh, the dad lost a job. The moms are the ones that pick up the pieces, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And they move into a car. Kids now are taking showers at the YMCA or they're taking showers at the Boys and Girls Club, right? Mm-hmm. That's the common thread. The, the something happened in the family that broke them up, right? So if we as a society can figure out ways of, of, of helping people, giving them information, exposing people to issues of how to help them before they t- become homeless, then we've done our jobs. But I don't know that I've answered your questions or not. It's a complicated issue, man. We just need to keep doing, we just need to keep doing something. Keep working. We do. I think we do. I, I just think, like I said, we're, our focus is, is really on the wrong, on the wrong population. Like I said, I think with all the nonprofits we got going on here in Whittier, uh, with all the uh, you know community groups that we have uh, in Whittier, um, obviously with the with the city uh, coming in and helping out with some of those uh, uh, organizations, I think we're doing a good job dealing with that homelessness issue. I just don't think we have enough efforts towards that other population which really needs to needs a help, even though they don't want it to be able to move on in a productive way. That one I think like you said it's it's hard. I don't think it will I don't think we'll ever come up with a with a like 100% success rate. Um but I think if we could start with something mm-hmm. um whether it's prevention or 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 dealing with it at that moment um I think it's going to start with our laws. Yeah. yeah. And it's either loosening some laws or enforcing some old laws. Um, but really, it's just getting on it because yeah. um, it has to be the enforcement. I, I, I 100% agree with you. I think you know if I'm driving down Woodyear Boulevard and I'm doing 60, I'm gonna you know, and there's a cop there. They're gonna pull me over and they're gonna give me a citation, right? And next time, I'm no longer gonna do that. So if, if I I'm going 60 and the cop sees me and doesn't do anything, I'm gonna go 60 every time, and then it puts other people at risk because I'm maybe driving too fast. This is the same thing. If we can't enforce and get the people off the streets that you know, like you said, the population of they're on the streets, don't want the help, and just want to have you know no rules in a sense. Then, if you can't enforce that, then it's just going to breed more of that because that will just keep growing and growing. So, I think it, it definitely has to come from enforcement, and it's it's the laws that need to change. There was uh, uh, at last this week's uh, city council, there was a pastor who came in and talked about you know having a, essentially a barbecue and party out in. Uh, uh, on on Whittier Boulevard, and and that was before I think we had our the conversation with uh, with uh, Officer Scoggins, and mm-hmm. I said, what if what if I took my family then had a party? I mean, I would have been taken down like that, right? <laughs> they would have said you and your family out. Um, and he explained obviously there's different laws uh, and they apply differently to both our situations, and and that's one of those things where you kind of look back and say, well, 
how is it that that you know I I, mean, I should be able to enjoy the area and, and in a productive, positive way? Yet there's somebody there who's who's not really doing anything great, but yet they're able to celebrate without having to have any repercussions. How what message is that sending over to us and it, or or everybody else who's not part of that 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 group, right? And and it's like you know I, I get it. I mean. Uh, uh, I'm compassionate. I, I, I want to be able to do good and, and, and obviously look out for my fellow companion and, and, and you know, uh, neighbor. Yep. But there's there's some, there's a limit. There's a limit, kind of like what Remo was saying, is, is if you get too much, I think they're going to expect too much, and it's never going to change. Um, whereas you start setting rules, and I think that that example that Remo gave about, about children, it, it, you almost have to put it that way. Uh, because if if you don't set the the rules or the standards um, and start enforcing that, then it, it's just it's never going to get anywhere. I mean, I think we'll get in that vicious cycle of things moving in circles uh, and not going anywhere. Um, yeah, you, you're, you're, um, that's true. The so so our focus then. By the way, thank you for for you know the compliments on what we're doing in, in Whittier and and um, uh, but we're always not doing it. Everything we can do, right? I mean, we're going to do because it, it, there's just there's real time issues that happen yeah. every day, right? And so, uh, but the uh, you know, like I said before, enforce, assist, and persist, right? Enforce the laws. Uh, I think that if you have a if there's a reputation, right? I mean, if there's a reputation that if you develop a, a reputation that you're just you're going to enforce the laws. We're not going to be easy for people to. We want to develop a, a, a reputation that would. We're not. We don't want it to go around that we're easy city to, to become sure. a homeless person. We okay. don't want that, right? We want uh, uh, people to understand that there are services here. Uh, however, we're not going to tolerate. Um, uh, we will not tolerate um, homeless homeless encampments and and camping out on our streets and camping out on our on our right of ways, right? And I think if that. If the reputation gets out, then I think that will help us. But we've got to make something happen for that reputation to take place, right? And that's what we're doing now, right? We're tr- creating a, a plan, if you will, uh, that will hopefully develop that reputation that Whittier, they have got the services, because we do. Uh, however, they won't tolerate encampments, and here's what they'll do. They'll, you know, they'll follow the, st- the laws. Um, they'll use all of the resources. They'll use... L.A. County Sheriff's Department uh, to clean up the encampments, um, and then they'll follow up and follow through to make sure it stays that way, right? Yeah. That's what we've got to do. And as a policy guy, as a city councilman, I mean, A, it breaks my heart to see anybody homeless, but B, I've got to clean it up. I can't leave it the way it is. Sorry. And you're right. I mean, again, I'm, I'm a compassionate guy, and I, 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 I want to be able to help uh, our population or any human being that as much as I can but for me uh, bringing a shelter here or, or and again shelter I think us also a broad word just like homelessness a uh, shelter again coming from from being and working in downtown LA I've seen two types of, of, of facilities one is where it's it's um, it's all they're good doing is is, is giving a warm food uh, a place to shower a place to sleep and you're on your way and those attract, like I said, people that you really don't want to, hold, you know, around. Then you got the other facilities that that actually take you in and walk you through a program. Mm-hmm. So you start at the front door, and at the front door is is, is uh, evaluation. You know, what kind of problems do you have? You know, what are you? What services do you need? We set you up with services, and you kind of progress on the hallway, and you're moving on right to the point yep. where at the end of the day, the back door. Is you're not coming into into a uh, uh, to real world, right? You're you're a productive citizen, and those attract different people, right? Um, I, I would almost say if those facilities already exist, can is there any way we could is there any way we could maybe not build a shelter here, mm-hmm. not build those facilities? Because like I said, I think we're we're doing great on mm-hmm. on that one population, That's but. Housing. Can we can we maybe just whatever resources we're looking to do towards a shelter that maybe we we disperse it to the other cities that already have a really good uh, a facility that's dealing with that? 
Like, like, is sure. there really a need to build more? So, um, great question. So remember, now it goes back to the cog, right, the stuff I'm doing on a regional level. And what I'm sh- sending around to the team here is a picture of Long Beach yeah. 21st, which is a, a – it's a housing project. Does that look a housing, like a housing project to you guys? No, you guys are builders. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody's sitting here. You're an architect. Yeah. You're real estate. Does that look? A, yeah, it doesn't. I mean, look that, that looks beautiful. something you see in downtown Seattle. That's a brand new development. Isn't that a beautiful project? Yeah. So what I'm sending around to the team here is a picture of 2114 uh, Long Beach, um, uh, 21st Street in Long Beach, which is a housing, homeless housing project. Um, it's amazing, right? Doesn't look like a housing project at all. I'd be, no. I, I would have that any, anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the people in this neighborhood, you don't see people sitting around. You know, I, I've been there twice. You don't see vagrants and you don't see that kind of stuff. So to answer your question, um, we're not suggesting that we build a, a shelter here in Whittier. That has never been suggested. Uh, what we're suggesting is, is that we um, uh, consider the best location, best location from a regional aspect of where we need to add more shelters, right, um, and, um, and more housing for homeless. Uh, we're... Now, should that be in Whittier? I just showed you a picture of a very cool project, right? This is an amazing project. It was a $21 million uh, project, right? Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but once again, we, we, we haven't identified a site for, for housing, for uh, homeless housing, and we're not, we haven't discussed it at the city council, uh, a site. Uh, your question is, should we, can we take the money that we have in place? So we have different funding um, opportunities. We have, um, we have CBG fund, we have CDBG funds, we have home funds, we have Lima money, um, and we have some money left over from redevelopment agency that we were able to keep. Uh, could we use that money to identify a site and distribute it, you know, throughout the county and different locations? Um, I think there's certain restrictions that we can't do that. They have to be used specifically for in, within the city, you know. Um, um, and I honestly don't know if there are other funds, but I can tell you that uh, Measure H, as you know, that we all voted for in, uh, back in November, that's all going towards housing um, throughout L.A. County. And so I think we can use some of those, those funds that we can distribute to other areas if we, if we decide to do that. And we can do it through the COG. I think the COG, the work that I'm doing now with the COG is that maybe we collect that money and we pull it all in together and we identify sites where we can create more beds for, home, for housing, for different types of housing, right? Mental health, single adults, and families throughout the region somewhere. And, and that's what I was going to say, I mean, as, as a suggestion is that, is that we maybe don't look at building a shelter, I'm air quoting here, uh, for homeless um, or a facility that, that is for homeless or, or that mm-hmm. kind of treatment. I think we use that those allocations to support maybe another city, a neighboring city or, or a, a city who's part of that COG to maybe have them fund their own kind of um, facility. And maybe what we do as a city, we build affordable housing that's, that's kind of like the, the picture you showed um, because at that point you'll be able to intake people who are now uh, gone through the programs, the program. uh, have the help, and now all they're looking for is an affordable place to live. Yeah, um, that I think, from my perspective, yeah, you're right. It's a beautiful project. It's money well invested, but it's now being put to use for for people who are now productive to the city. Yeah, I would even uh, like debate you on that, saying that building more affordable housing is preventative, not even helping those who are in need that are currently on the street. I just think that the rhetoric needs to be changed from getting people out of our city to helping them become contributing members of society. The rhetoric needs to change. Um, Just, you know, that's what, I don't know if that's the goal of people, because all I hear is we need to house people. No, that's totally true. We totally need to house people. Um, But what next? Then what? You know? Jobs. I, I, yeah, exactly. Jobs yeah, yeah. contribute to society. I, 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 I jobs. Think, That's what we need to do. No, we absolutely. Jobs. I mean, you look at the population that we have. I mean, you're right. At 80, 88,000. Yeah. Um, I like to see what the percentage is that are actually, you know, air quote, uh, uh, homeless and homeless that are native, here, that they originally started here in Whittier um, and compare that to actually people who are from outside the, the city limits who have come here for that same reason that you just said that they came to get those services and because the services are good they kind of stuck around and now now where do they go right 
And I think that that where do they go after the fact is is what I think if we are going to look at building something, it should be that that type of housing sure. for for those yeah. supportive of housing. Supportive that, housing. That, yeah. that put them in the neighbor's <laughs> house not or neighbors. Backyard. Yeah, not yeah, in my, not my, my backyard. backyard. But my brother Maybe. lives in Orange, Maybe. and it was right next to where, Santa Ana River. where the Santa Ana Riverbed. And I tell you, there's been many times where we were hanging out on a Saturday, and he'll see. You know, a couple characters on a bike looking like they're probably not up to anything. And uh, then that happened. They went in there and kicked everyone out. And then all the other cities started saying, well, why are you sending them to us? And Mm -hmm. so I I think if they're going to get the help and they don't want the help, if you enforce it, you know, if they're someone is incarcerated and they're getting services there that they're probably more likely to, to get better, at least in my opinion, when they're on when they have structure than when they don't and they're hanging out with everyone else. Yep. And, yep. and if people, if they know Whittier is a place to be because no one cares, right, in their eyes, no one's going to enforce anything. They're just going to tell Change their friends the and tell their friends and everyone, and all of a sudden that's how this community just gets more and more of that. So, By the way, um, just so you guys know, that, that whole issue in, in um, Santa Ana, you know, it's died down because the news is, you know, they stopped it. Yeah, it's not the shiny new uh, news item and, yeah. and the thing, but that hasn't resolved itself. You know, um, uh, there's still issues there. And uh, by the way, the voucher program um, only that was a couple months. Right? Uh, that was only a couple months, but yeah. I, I know a lot about what happened there, and uh, I know that unfortunately, and this is an interesting uh, thing. Um, unfortunately, what happened with those voucher programs is that um, the hotels in which uh, were used for the voucher program were severely damaged to the point where they no longer can be uh, serviced as hotels. Yeah. And that's unfortunate, right? Because, my gosh, somebody gives you a voucher to go stay there. Yeah, and you trash their place. And you trash the place, right? So, and I'm not suggesting that that happens every time or it's going to happen every time. I'm saying that was a, a consequence uh, that happened as a result of that, that we, because we know what's happened now, we, we should, you know, there are other ways of managing that. And, and I know that they're doing... They're doing a great job in Orange County. They're managing it pretty well, you know, and, and there's some things that we should follow their leads on and some things that we shouldn't, yeah. you know. Uh, but for our city, Remo, you said it, right? It, it's We don't want to have the reputation as a city uh, that allows encampments. Mm-hmm. We want to make that go away right now. I want to kill that. Yeah. I want to just get rid of that. And I almost, you know, for example, uh, yesterday they had KF, KFI did a thing on, on Whittier and stuff, and well, I appreciate the exposure. I don't appreciate it as well because I don't want people to know it's that negative, my issue. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I don't want people to know that my city has an issue. It's yeah. it's like dir- airing your dirty laundry, yeah. Yeah. right? You you know we all fa- yeah. we have families, right? We don't want everybody to know what's going on in your family, right? Yeah. We, I don't want to air my dirty laundry. So I appreciate the fact that they're exposing and they're a news service, and you know it, you know it allows somebody to have a nice Audi somewhere on the west side. You know, that's nice. But for me, it's, it's my, I'm not interested in airing my dirty laundry. I want it to keep right here, and I want to take care of my own issues. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's enforce, assist, and, and then persist. Let's stay on top of it. That's, that's what I want to do. And, and uh, once again, open for suggestions. Yeah. Don't assume I know everything. Uh, if you have ideas, go to What's Up Whittier to Christine, <laughs> and she will funnel those suggestions to the subcommittee. Right, we have a subcommittee, and uh, uh, do that, please. And once again, we want your help. If you have ideas, um, this is an issue that, by the way, no one else has been able to resolve it perfectly. Right? right? The genius is up and down the state, and the Mm -hmm. genius is up and down the the west side, and everything else. No one's been able to resolve it. You have some ideas. We're all leaders. My last suggestion, I promise. Okay. I say we (laughs) go to Silicon Valley. Get one of these these app gurus who's looking to do a new venture and come up with a new app. <laughs> what is the I app? I don't know. It? Everything gets solved with an app nowadays. It's, you like, know? Air, <laughs> it's <laughs> like Airbnb <laughs> and Uber like put it. together. <laughs> Except it's called. Uh, these guys, everything gets solved with an app nowadays. That's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It must be a police app then. That's what <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is all the Silicon Valley. You're uh, out there. No, but but thank you again, Fernando. Um, um, again, thank you for for giving out that obviously open end invitation for people to kind of chime in because I think you're right. There's 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 only a few of you 
right? And and uh, once you bring all these sol- solutions, and that's when you talk about solutions, not problems, because we all know what the problems are, <laughs> right? Um, but come up with solutions, solutions on, on being able to, to deal with some of this stuff. So um, with that said... I did have one question because we participate in the concerts in the park at Central Park. And so those are going to be coming up in a couple weeks um, or maybe a month or two. They start in June. In June, yeah. yeah. So I know you mentioned that the hope is that within a month or so that what's happening in Parno, I mean, if that stays the same, does the city move forward, you know, and does a concert in the park or? Well, look, Remo, I, uh, most of you know that I go to, you know, I'm a big fan of hot dogs and pizza, and uh, mm-hmm. concerts at the park have, have lots of pizza, both. lots of hot dogs, <laughs> okay. both, and so, um, and being around people and music, so um, yeah. I love concerts in the park, and uh, um, hopefully we don't get there. Uh, but I can tell you there's no way in heck that I would support opening up any park if there's going to yeah. be needles around, yeah. you know, yeah. and, you know, for the safety of both parties, yeah. right, for the safety of residents who pay their taxes that want to use the park and love concerts in the park and for the safety of those individuals that are in those tents right i mean because those 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 people clash you know then nothing good's going to happen yeah right? there's a lot of her i mean a lot of harassment too there's a lot of harassment on both sides yeah absolutely right absolutely. And, and so so uh, i would say for safety purposes there's no way in heck i would say yeah, yeah let's go ahead and just open it up and see yeah. what happens no yeah. so that's why we've got to do our job and you know fix the issues, clean them up, resolve it, and uh, get our city back in place. And uh, you've got my commitment that I'm going to do everything I can to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando, for coming on. I know it's a lot of information, a little bit of time, so we'll need to uh, stay up uh, up to date with it. Uh, for those of you that are listening, if you guys want to attend city council meetings, there you can watch them on Channel 3. Uh, keep up to date there. And or what's up with you? Christine's always there broadcasting oh, live yeah, on absolutely. Instagram. Follow Christine on her Instagram and she'll yeah. uh, keep you updated. At the singing moon, that's right. Um, <laughs> shameless plug right there. Hey, why not? <laughs> hey, man, marketing 24-7. That's who I am. You know, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> really all about much. sales, man. It's all about sales. <laughs> okay, but thank you. Based on our last two questions that we always end our, our, our kind of podcast with, uh, maybe ha- has your answers changed? I mean, do you have a go a favorite go to now or New restaurant? Uh, different, you guys. By the way, we interviewed it. your wife a couple sessions ago, and and oh, uh, no. <laughs> we unfortunately told her that where your favorite spot is, and she just <laughs> she just said, "Now I know where he goes on the <laughs> midnight." Uh, 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 look, I'm gonna stay with my um, you know for my favorite hamburger. I gotta say is definitely. It's Norm's on the corner of Whittier and Ocean Boulevard, yep, and best um, French fries. the uh, uh, the number one, which is the actually number two, is the uh, the cheeseburger. I get the cheeseburger, not the just the, you know the cheeseburger combo. Mm-hmm. And uh, Norm's my you know that's my go to place. Plus they have a really cool weather uh, you know thermometer out there. You know, <laughs> and so I also know they get the thermometer. And uh, and then uh, my favorite Mexican place, and and uh, I'll take. I love Veracruz, right? So Veracruz is on the corner of Mills and Whittier Boulevard, and that family is an incredible. They're a Whittier family. They live right here in Whittier, uh-huh. um, and the Veracruz family, they, they have great. But we have some great places in Uptown, of course, yeah. and my friends in Uptown. Steve's Barbecue is one of my favorite, uh, you know, barbecue places to hang out. I love the music there, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, they have cold beer. In, and, of course, you know, the bottle room has cold beer as well. And so, look, I – it's a part – Favorite Mexicans, Veracruz. Favorite hamburger places, uh, Norm's. But most of the restaurants know that I'm all over the place up here. I'm at Fly, right, I'm all the places. Right. And I don't discriminate against that. As long as they got cold beer. Right? <laughs> if they have cold beer and – They're the favorite. <laughs> good conversation, right? There's nothing yeah. better than sitting around at one of my favorite bars up here, up here and just having great conversation, debating people about yeah. the issues. That's right. So I think That's we have right. some very smart people here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so three of them are sitting here. There you go. Uh, what's at a table? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> uh, ha, since our last podcast has any, has the uh, anything changed in terms of what what is uh, what should we have here in Whittier that's missing? Oh, um, what should we have in Whittier that's missing? Um, well, non political side. I mean, no, of just, course, yeah, <laughs> no, not political. Um, you know. Uh, it, it, I, I, I wish we had 
better uh, sports facilities. Okay, I, I look. My kids are all grown now, you know, uh-huh. and and but man, when they were growing up, I got tired of driving the, you know, the belt, you know, yeah, to, to Brea sure. and driving Brea, all over the place. Yeah. Of course, they were playing travel stuff, you know. You see, so you, you got to travel there, but. I, but look, we have great – York Field is amazing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we have the mm-hmm. Pony uh, Baseball World Series at York Field. And so the kids – by the way, uh, Ryan, um, uh, who managed York Field Baseball mm-hmm. for us, is now the Do- L.A. Dodgers field uh, uh, guy. Yeah, I met wow. him at Spin Ryan Lounge. Uh, you met Ryan We all toasted to him, yeah. Wait a minute. Well, nice. I, I know. They go on Tuesdays. <laughs> I met, like, the Parks and Rec department there. It was kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. So – we know, and, and we have, um, you know, the facilities that we do have, we do a great job of managing it. It would be cool for me to have a really cool sports facility that we can say, you know, every time I drive down La Mirada Boulevard and I see that soccer field um, mm-hmm. over at Biola, right, yeah. where you've got, the, you've got the structure on the bottom for parking, yeah. you know, and then you've got the soccer field on top. Um, that's really cool. So I... You know, hopefully, uh, um, you know, I'm lucky enough to be part of a city council that identifies a site for a really cool soccer field that we can use, you know, and, and for baseball as well and, and for football. Because you can do both, right? You can have a soccer field that you can use for football and you can use – and then uh, for softball and baseball, we have some amazing, you know, girls' softball teams in this town. And yeah, mm-hmm. my friend John Hernandez is out there. He's, he manages, you know, some great teams. And so – my, my answer is, very simply, a well-positioned, well-thought-out sports facility park that we can say that's our sports park and, you know, and be really proud of. That's what we should – that's what I wish we had. You know, nice. um, yeah, that's it. Well, All right. again, thank you for coming on. And, uh, again, we'll have to set this up again. Maybe like uh, I don't know. Like a Rimo quarterly de- update. When Rimo decides not <laughs> a to quarterly sh- update. <laughs> when Rimo decides not to show up, we'll, we'll give you a ring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, man, I'm you know I'm yes, easy. Yes. Just call me up yeah. and uh, I'll do all you- last minute stuff. Yeah. I'll be here, man. Perfect. <laughs> I'll forward you our schedule. Yeah. Just clear it just in yeah. case. Yeah. Done. <laughs> Done. Okay. All right, Fernando. Well, thank thanks you. a lot. Right on. Thanks right. a lot, guys. See, See you later, Whittier. See you later, Whittier. What's up, Whittier? Whittier. Oh my goodness.